Okay, um, here's the state space representation of a system. Control system. Use the input, Y is the output, X is the state. A, B, C, and D are matrices. If I take the Laplace transform of this first equation, it, there's a derivative, so that means in the Laplace domain, S times the Laplace transform of X minus its initial condition, X at time zero. And that equals A times the Laplace transform of X plus B times the Laplace transform of U. A little bit of algebra here. This left side can be expressed this way, SI minus A times X of S. Move this little X at time zero over to the right. Well, I move this over to the left. Um, so this equation is the same as this equation. Now I can multiply through by the inverse of this SI minus A. There I have what X of S is. I have the Laplace transform of the state, which means if you give me an input in an initial condition, I can find the Laplace transform of the state. So if I just take the inverse Laplace transform of that, I find the state itself. And here's what Y is. And again, if you if I know the input or its Laplace transform in the initial state, I can find the output or the Laplace transform of the output. And if I take the inverse Laplace transform, the output itself. This is all pretty neat, I think. Uh, so we'll apply states, our Laplace transform to state space format. And you can see we can find either the state or the output, whatever we want. This applies even for multiple input, multiple output systems. It's pretty, pretty awesome, I think. Um, if, I, if I set that input to zero, let's go back. Let's look at this state and set the input to zero. That means this U is zero, and I'm just left with this part. This part. Well, the actual state is the inverse Laplace transform of that. X of zero is just constant, so you can pull that out. We call that the state transition matrix. State transition matrix is the inverse Laplace transform of this thing, the inverse of SI minus A. So what does it do? It tells you how the state will transition from any initial condition when the input is zero. You just multiply that initial condition by that state transition matrix. When the initial state is zero, but U is something, now here's what Y was, but if this initial state is zero, this term goes away and we just left with that term. Well, that gives me a, um, a transition matrix. This is the, uh, the transfer function, transition matrix. It gives me a transfer function. Here's the transfer function, which in general is a matrix. Um, We're only going to do it for single input, single output systems, though. So this is going to be a good old transfer function, a ratio of a polynomial over a polynomial in S. Uh, let's see. We, we had to deal with this thing, the inverse of SI minus A. The inverse is the adjoint over the determinant. So that's what this transfer function becomes, I can put it all over that determinant. That is my characteristic equation. Whatever makes this determinant be zero, whatever um, S's make this determinant zero, 
those will be the poles of the system. Now we call them eigenvalues when we're doing state space or modern control uh, because it comes from the eigenvalue problem in matrix theory. But eigenvalues are the same things as poles. Here's an example. Here, say, here's our A matrix. So what's SI minus A? S plus one, minus a half, minus one, S plus three A. Now we gotta find this determinant. Remember how to find the determinants? It's the product of the main diagonals minus the product of the off diagonals, or two by two. That's this, algebraically simplified to this, or actually to this. Here's my characteristic equation. In this case, it factors pretty easily. So what are my poles or my eigenvalues? Minus two and minus a half. Get how that works? We're gonna have to do uh, some determinants or an inverse. I'll save this for another uh, video, but start with a system in state space format. Here's all the things we can do. We can find the characteristic equation, and from there, the eigenvalues or poles, transfer function, corresponding control canonical form and observer canonical form, the state transition matrix, the solution to the state given a certain input, and the initial condition is zero, or the output itself, all those things. We'll go through all that in a subsequent video. But it's quite a bit you can learn from that uh, original state space format. Not a bit you can calculate from.